So the biggest disappointment for you this year, would you say it's the the biggest disappointment for you in regards to any video game you've ever anticipated? Uh, no, because Colonial Marines. Ooh. Colonial Marines, if you don't know, Colonial Marines is the reason that every time you see a video game trailer now, it says captured in-game or not in-game footage. Because of, that's because of Colonial Marines. Yeah, that was a very deceitful trailer they had, yeah. I believe. Clo I, at this point, Colonial Marines is probably still the worst out of... The biggest disappointment. Yeah, the biggest disappointment. But no, the big disappointment for, for me was Callisto Protocol. Yes, I know you had been looking forward to Callisto Protocol, which is a game about uh, exploring in space. It was supposed to be a spiritual sequel to Dead Space yep, series. Yep, supposed to be a spiritual successor to Dead Space. You and I played Dead Space 1 and Dead Space 2 recently. We yep. love them a lot. We Dead played space... them in preparation for Callisto Protocol and to a lesser extent the Dead Space 1 remake that's coming out, I think, January or February. Yeah. I forget exactly when. Fingers crossed for that. Mm -hmm. I don't know. I I was, you know, a while ago, before Callisto Protocol came out, I would have said that I was very excited for the remake of Dead Space. Yeah. Now I'm... Apprehensive? Yeah. Callisto Protocol came out on my birthday. I was do I did a birthday stream where I played it, and I had to stop playing it and play something else because it was making me really mad. I did hear that that game had some problems when it came out. You, uh, oh, it's got a lot of problems. Do you think those are problems that they could be fixed with b uh, patches, or is there some inherent... The problems on PC, and I'm referring specifically to the performance problems, those can be fixed with patching, and to some extent, most of them have been fixed. I played it on PlayStation 5, which... Watching a bunch of... Watching a bunch of the interviews they did with, uh, with Schofield or with Glenn Schofield, who is the director, watching the interviews they did with him, it was very obvious, this is the reason that I bought it on PlayStation, it was very obvious to me that he was most excited for the PlayStation release of the game. It seems like they primarily designed it to be released on PlayStation, and then on PC and Xbox 360, it was more of a port. I see. So I didn't experience a lot of the, I didn't experience basically any of the bugs that other people did on PC. That was the first big thing that most people were complaining about is that it runs like absolute, absolute dog shit <laughs> on PC. Mm -hmm. The problems I had with the game are that, oh man, there's a lot of them. Some design problems that can't be fixed easily. There's, yeah. Is one of the problems that it's less of a gun shooter game and more of like a up close melee combat game? Yeah, thing? yes. Um, in Dead Space, the, the best weapon in that game not even arguably. The best weapon in Dead Space is the plasma cutter. Which is a kind of firearm. That's the one everybody remembers. It's iconic. It, everybody remembers the plasma cutter from Dead Space and Dead Space 2. Mm -hmm. that, that was one of the things that I think hurt Dead Space 3 so much is that you couldn't have just the plasma cutter. Yeah. <laughs> you had to make a version of the plasma cutter and it wasn't as good. Mm. Well, they had to sell you on those microtransactions somehow. Yeah, exactly. This game, I know it's a survival horror game. But this game really does not want to give you ammo. Oh, you get barely any ammo. And I watched, I've watched multiple, because I didn't make it that far in the game. You made it two hours in about. Not even, I, two hours in because I couldn't get past the first encounter with an enemy mm. until four tries. Mm. I'll, I'll get to that in a second. The, the, they really want you to just run around and bonk stuff. They want you to run around and bonk stuff and use the telekinesis module to throw people around. They don't really want you to use the gun that's in the game. You barely get ammo for it. And basically every time I've watched it, people have like six rounds total. And it takes three to four rounds to kill an enemy. Wow, all right. And you'll encounter multiple enemies at once. Is it more of a survival horror game where it wants you to, like, like with the original Resident Evils, run away from most encounters? No, they want you to use telekinesis and melee. Mm, okay. They want you to use the melee weapon and telekinesis. One of the other pro one of the other problems I have is that it's got this wonky dodge mechanic that I could not wrap my head around. Resident Evil Three had a dodge mechanic too. Yeah, but the dodge mechanic in Resident Evil Three is if the thing is attacking you, you just press a button and dodge away from it. Okay. You don't have to look at the thing attacking you, determine what arm it's attacking you with, and then dodge in the same direction as that arm. So it's not giving you iframes. You are legitimately dodging its hitbox. Yeah. 
it took me so long to try to figure this out and then I immediately forgot it because I had to put I had to put the game on again I had to put it on video game journalist difficulty where it doesn't matter is it actually called that no okay I just <laughs> I just jokingly refer to it as that I had to put it on a difficulty level where you don't have to specifically dodge in the direction the attack is coming from to scoot around it. Sure. You can dodge the wrong direction and just get immediately attacked. Mm -hmm. Everything kills you in like two hits. And I mean, it would make sense if they were like, if they're like necromorphs. Cause yeah, they got freaking bladed arms, but these are basically just jacked up dudes on roids. Okay. They're, they're affected with something that's turning them into a jacked up monster. And they just like punch you two times and you die. Okay. So the biggest issue for you is balance. It sounds like. Nope. The biggest issue for me is that they went all in on making this melee. Mm -hmm. They really wanted to make this melee. Right. They they want you to use this stun baton thing to run through the game, bonking things with a stun baton. There's only one button for melee. Right. When you play Elden Ring, or Dark Souls, or Bloodborne, or Skyrim, any game with melee, you have... More than one button for melee. Well, they may have the same button for melee, but you can hold it to perform a stronger attack. I'm thinking of Skyrim. There's like a single swing or you can hold it to a power swing. Yeah. You can't do that. There's just one kind of melee. There's just one melee. You just go whoop, whoop, whoop. You just press the same button over and over and over and over and over and hope that the attacks land. And I, I re I'm, I'm comparing it to, to like Bloodborne or Dark Souls. You have a light attack and a heavy attack. And then you can two-hand the weapon and have a light attack and a heavy attack. In Bloodborne, you can transform the weapon. So you have four ways that you can attack with this weapon. And then there's other ways of doing like a dodge and then an attack. So now you, you've, you keep exponentially increasing the different attacks that you can do. You can do an attack where you sprint forwards and do a light attack. An attack where you sprint forwards and do a heavy attack. You can do a dodge backwards and then attack. In this game, you get, you attack. Mm -hmm. There's no dodge and then attack. There's no do a heavy attack. There's no block and then follow up with an attack. The block does not work. I cannot get block to work hmm. in this game. You're supposed to just hold backwards. And yeah, it does chip damage, but whatever. You're blocking the attack. Okay. It doesn't work. I could not get it to work. So it might actually work, but it's not intuitive in the slightest for you, huh? No, not intuitive at all. There's an intro sequence in the game. It's the first time you see an enemy in the game. You go into, you open a door to a room and there's like three prisoners in there. Two of them are beaten up on this dude and the third one grabs you and starts trying to kill you. So, and it goes through like a quick time event where you're mashing buttons and pressing and like it, it goes through a, a thing where it's trying to teach you the mechanics of the game. Okay. But all the mechanics are just pop-ups. You remember in Dead Space where when you first leave, when you first land on the Ishimura and you get out of the spaceship... And there's like the little voice that's like, press this button to use or select items. And then it shows a little pop-up that Isaac is looking at. Okay, yep. It's got that, I don't know what the name for it is, but it's got that built-in interface. Where yes. there's no HUD, it's just there. This just straight up slaps a giant thing in front of you on the screen. A giant text box in, in front the, of you in on the, the screen. In the middle of the screen? In the middle of the screen that's press left to dodge. Okay, so not the best presentation. And I think the reason they did that is because people couldn't figure out how the fuck to dodge. So they had to, they had to straight up, they couldn't have it be an, a built-in HUD that your character is seeing. They had to just slap it on the screen. Hmm. Anyway, you go into the room, you get attacked by a dude, you have to like dodge and you have to do like counterattacks on him. And I died four or five times to the first time you fight an enemy without those prompts. Hmm. So you go through these quick time events that there's no way you can fail these quick time events. Because it just, it just sits there until you do the action. Okay, I'm familiar with those, yeah. And then you have to fight an enemy without the quick time, or without the button prompts. Okay. Or without, without it waiting for you. Right, right, right. I died to that enemy four times. Okay, it's frustrating. The first enemy in the game I died to four times mm -hmm. because the dodging is so unintuitive and so just dumb. Okay. Do you think that the game could have some merit if these problems were fixed? For example, if the developers came out with an update or people modded in that ammo drops are now tenfold, you're not getting four bullets, you're getting 40 bullets for every drop. It, maybe, but like the gun is not effective. The gun barely does anything. If they lowered enemy health, if they lowered enemy damage output, so the game were just easier, essentially, we'll say that. If it were easier to get past the enemies... And you had borderline god mode. If you had god mode turned on in the game, would it still be fun? I don't think so. Why not? 
Um, there's other problems where, like, the camera doesn't know what the hell to do. Oh. In Dead Space, the camera's right, the camera's behind you. It doesn't ever really change how far away behind you it is. Isaac's a normal size on the screen. Mm -hmm. He's not taking up the screen. In this game, the camera goes away from you and then towards you and away from you. There are points where the main character, whose name I completely can't remember because he's totally forgettable. There are points where the main character is taking up a solid quarter of my screen. You can't see past All I can him. see is his fucking back <laughs> and bip on his back. <laughs> bip. That, it's like the black black iron prison or whatever it's called. The, the HUD, essentially. I, uh, no, all I can see is the the the, the text on, his, oh. on printed on his uniform. <laughs> the it letters says bip. BIP. <laughs> all I can see is bip and then, and then this giant orange back. <laughs> all right. And like I can't tell where the enemy is. I this is a nitpicky thing, but the fire looks like shit. Oh, yeah? The fire in Dead Space looks better than this fire does. Mm. And it's a little nitpicky thing, but sure. it's like, this came out on PlayStation 5. Why does Dead Space 1 have better fire than this? That's a fair, that's a fair criticism. The fire is literally like the 2D graphic of fire that when you rotate, when you move the camera, you can see, you can see the fire move. <sighs> yeah. That's rough. It's, it's kind of rough these days. I would be willing to cut it slack if this game had come out five years ago. Mm -hmm. I would be like, yeah, okay, it's right. fine. You know what? Whatever. The fire wasn't a priority. Right. Um, but this seems like the kind of thing you'd be able to do on a PlayStation 3. Yeah. So there's, like, that prop... The, the camera is just everywhere. It, the camera doesn't know what it's trying to do. Mm -hmm. And he takes up... Your character ends up taking up so much of the screen that I can't... The game look... Uh, fire aside, there's so much of the, of the stuff in this game that looks really cool. It mm -hmm. looks like an environment I want to explore. But the game's just like, no, look at this dude's back. Look at it. Too close to the guy's back, huh? Look at his back. Look at that. Look at this wall. Mm -hmm. is you, are you looking at the wall right now? Because there's like three enemies that are attacking you, but the wall is very important. Sounds like there's a lot of things they need to correct with this game to make it tolerable. There were, there's a lot of things they need to correct. And honestly, I don't know if I'm ever even going to play any more of this game because one, I can't return it. Well, I can't return the game. I bought it on PlayStation and PlayStation doesn't issue returns. And because the game is not as broken as Cyberpunk 2077 is, they're not issuing refunds for mm -hmm. it. So I can never return this game. Okay. Um, I don't know if I'm ever going to go back to it because once I realized how not fun, how much of a slog it was going through this part of the game, mm -hmm. I was just like, whatever. I'm just going to look up the story now. Okay, you're spoiling yourself on the entire story. I was now. just like, whatever. It's you know what? I'm I'm really I'm incredibly disappointed. I'm actually pretty bitter and angry right now mm -hmm. because of how disappointed I am in this game. So I'm going to look up the story, and it sucks. Oh, really? Oh, no. It's not good. Oh, no. It's not good. Uh, can I Can I read you? We'll do a... a we'll put a slight spoiler, spoiler tag warning. here. Spoiler warning, okay. We'll put a slight spoiler tag There's here. some bad dialogue you want to read out to me? No, 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 no. I'm going to, I'm going to read you part... I'm going to read you a part of the synopsis of the story, and oh. tell me if it sounds familiar to you. Oh, you think I might have ripped something off, huh? Maybe it played a bit too close of a homage to Dead Space, hmm? And the Unotologists were worshipping the market. It is revealed that the prison warden is part of a religious sect called the Commonality, attempting to enact a plan called the Callisto Protocol, which is to find a way to advance human evolution. To further this end, the warden arranged for a second outbreak to occur in Black Iron, similar to one that had occurred other er, in another place, in order to find a subject compatible with alien infection and replicate Subject Zero with a Subject Alpha. Uh-huh. The Unitologists unleash a marker in order to bring about convergence. Gee, that doesn't sound like a similar thing to what I just described at all. So you're saying it's paying a bit too much attention to Dead Space's story. At the end of, at the end of this game, again, spoiler tags. Well, if, if it's supposed to be the spiritual sequel to Dead Space, then it should have a lot of the same elements, but just renamed to... You, you know. could have changed... You could have changed... A you didn't have to one for one the original story from Dead Space 1? You remember at the end of Dead Space 2... Where Isaac, spoilers, at the end of Dead Space 2, where Isaac puts Ellie, or Ellie gets in the spaceship and then Isaac sends the spaceship off because he's like, somebody has to survive. Mm -hmm. Like, I'm not going to make it out of here. At the end of this game, Jacob puts Danny in the last remaining escape pod with an alien larval sample, giving Danny all the evidence she needs to expose the secret experiments that were performed there. And then he sacrifices himself. Pretty much. Pretty cliche. I mean, he does... Oh, and then there's also the fact that... Again, I'm going to spoil... I'm going to spoil the end of the game here. Of again, Callisto Protocol? Yes. Okay. Again, more spoilers. The, they did not end the game in a satisfying way. The, there's a self-destruct sequence happening. The whole place you're on is going to blow up. You, the player character, basically sends this the, the woman off to go survive and reveal what happened here. Survive in space. As he fends off the enemies fighting him, 
The doctor contacts him, having halted the self-destruct sequence and informing him of a possible escape if they work together, before he's suddenly attacked by a still-living other enemy that you fought. Okay. That's the end of the game. That's the end of the game. That's the end of the game. That sounds like a build-up to the final chapter of the game. That's the end of the game. That's how the game ends. By the, the game D isn't even finished. By the DLC for the real ending. Yes. And I don't think they're going to get a DLC. This game has been reviewed so poorly that I would not be surprised if they just straight up don't get a DLC. Kind of like how Mass Effect Andromeda had that. Uh, they actually did have an ending, but there was like a bunch of questions about this mystery Corian ship. They didn't make it. Who knows what happened? And they were going to answer that in DLC, but the game was just so poorly received. Yeah, I don't, I don't think they're going to get And it really, it really, you know, it's not a jump scare. It's not a jump scare like at the end of Dead Space. It's a straight up cliffhanger that doesn't have a resolution in the next chapter. Well, I can see why you wouldn't want to continue playing the game if you know that's the case. Once I once I looked that up, I was like, wow, that's incredibly unsatisfying. Mm -hmm. I no, I don't want to finish this now. If oh man, if players why are you could, gonna blue ball me? If players could get to the end of your game, they'd be so disappointed. Yeah, there's so many disappointing the the graphics that don't work on the console version. Mm -hmm. Or on the, the 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 PC version, the the fact that some of the graphics are still really ugly. The camera just points at, at everything but what is supposed to be happening. Mm -hmm. The fact that the enemies are just damaged sponges. The basic enemy. The first time I successfully fought one that wasn't in the intro cutscene. Mm -hmm. The first time I successfully fought one. It takes so many hits to kill one. And I realize that, yes, you get the stun baton later, and the stun baton does slightly more damage. But, like, when you're using the crowbar, it was just, like, it was a slog. It was a solid 45 seconds to a one-minute fight with one enemy. Wow. All right. Which you do not want. I do not want every single fight in my survival horror game to be with a crimson head. No. It sounds like a, a frustrating experience. That sounds incredibly frustrating and infuriating. The point that I stopped playing on stream, the point I stopped playing on stream is you get, you go down a hallway. This is very early in the game. If you're actually going through the game at a decent clip, this is probably only 30 or 45 minutes into the game. Mm -hmm. It took me like two hours to get to this point because I kept fucking dying. There's a point where there's basically, there, you start going down a hallway. There's an enemy that's ahead of you. So you start fighting this enemy, but then another one comes up behind you. So now you have to fight that enemy. And then another one comes up behind him. So now you basically have to fight. You can fight. You can get the first one dead. And then you basically have to fight two more enemies at the same time. All right. The game does not make it clear that you are supposed to run away from them. Oh, okay. You're supposed to just run away from them. Everybody that I've watched get past that part. They maybe fight the first dude and then sprint past. But it doesn't make it clear because, and this is a problem with the graphics again. When you're, you're coming down the hallway, mm -hmm. there's an enemy in front of you. There's a bunch of stuff piled up that's like a barricade. Some of it's on fire. You're supposed to like vault over the barricade and keep running past. But because the part that you're supposed to vault over is completely covered in darkness, you don't know. Oh. So I'm like, oh, I'm supposed to fight these dudes. You think so? Yeah. I spent 25 minutes fighting these dudes and dying over and over and over again. And oh my God, I completely, I just remembered this. There's two healing mechanics in the game. When you kill an enemy and you stomp on their corpse, which you have to stomp on them now. Oh, if you don't stomp remember on them, they come Space, back? Remember, no, 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 no. Remember in Dead Space how when you would kill an enemy, sometimes an eye will go boop and pop out of them? An eye? An item. An item, an item oh, will yeah. go boop and pop. So you, just, go up, you step on their body so you can get the item that's in their body. Yes, but it was like sometimes just the act of shooting at them would make the item pop out of them. Yes. This game, you have to stomp on an enemy in order to get the item out of them. So it won't just naturally uh, drop out. You have to stomp every single enemy. That's frustrating. There's two types of healing in this game. There's quick healing, which are just little items you pick up, and it's like plus a certain amount. So it's like plus 35 out of 100. Mm -hmm. And they're little quick healing ones. You pick them up, you're instantly healed for that amount. The actual health kits are a syringe gun that you inject into your neck. The animation of you healing is, I think... 10 seconds long. And they expect you to do that in combat. 10 seconds seems pretty excessive. 10 seconds is incredibly excessive. Especially when everyone moves just as fast as you do. You have to, you have to stop moving entirely. You have to stop. You stop moving. You pick up, the, you pick up the, the injector thing. You take it off your belt. You stick it into your neck and kneel down on the ground. And then inject it. And it does a close up on your neck. Showing the health bar getting bigger. Mm -hmm. You have to do it in the battle. You can't move. They clearly, they don't expect you to do this in battle. In battle. I see. However, that means that during a battle, if there's a battle with multiple enemies, you have to frame perfect dodge every single attack 
and not take any damage, or if you do take damage, find a way to stomp on the enemies that are dead on the ground to find an item and pick it up all while still dodging attacks and delivering attacks at the same time. So the quick healing is not enough, you say? The quick healing is, it might be enough. It might be enough. It might not be enough. But it might not be enough. And also there's no guarantee that they're going to drop a healing item. They might drop money. Okay, so if they replace these long healing items with more quick healing items. You remember in Dead Space and Dead Space 2 when you would use a healing item and go, go psh, and you instantly have your health back. It's like maybe one second. Yeah. Like, like a half to one second. Yeah, half frame second, yeah. And you, Even can do, if, you, don't, you don't stop moving. You just hit the button and your character yeah. gets some health back. In, in, uh, in Dark Souls, Dark Souls 2, Bloodborne, well, Dark Souls 2 had a pretty long healing mechanic, but like Dark Souls, Bloodborne, Elden Ring, any of those games, when you heal, it's like maybe two seconds. And you don't stop. You slowly you can walk. You, you just kind of walk slowly, but you can still walk and like kind of dodge things. Mm -hmm. You can still get yourself into a position. You don't take a fucking knee on the ground and go... <laughs> it is ten seconds. They do not plan on you healing in combat. They plan on you either frame perfect every single combat scenario and then still coming out of it with enough health to heal mm -hmm. or they expect you to keep like fucking chameleon eye, one eye on the combat and another eye looking around, scanning the fucking environment for corpses that are on the ground that you can stomp on to maybe find a healing item. It sounds based on all these complaints you have about it, that it's got a lot of issues that would need to be fixed to make it playable. And I know there are, some games do accrue a very loyal following. For example, games that would be pretty notoriously awful, like Colonial Marines or Sonic 06, have dedicated fandoms that, that Colonial work. Marines doesn't. doesn't have Sonic a 06 does. I would say like Cyberpunk 70, 2077 or Fallout 76 or Sonic 06. There are these games that started at, well, Sonic 06 is still shit. But they're games that started out good or started out bad and were improved through updates. And through the uh, actions of the people that were playing them, modding them themselves. I don't know if that's going to happen with this game. I don't know what the draw of Callisto Protocol would be at this point because it was marketed as being a spiritual successor to the Dead Space series. Yeah. But I, it feels like it falls flat in a lot of regards. It falls, yeah, it falls flat in many, many regards. Ba like, nobody's playing it anymore. Mm -hmm. I was watching a couple people after it came out, like, in the week after it came out. I watched some people kind of try to speedrun it, and then that, that was it. I haven't seen anything more about it. Nobody's playing it anymore. Dang. Because, nope. like, that's how not good... And uh, I... <clears throat> I'm worried about... I'm worried about Glenn Schofield. Because is he the person who made? Callisto he's the director. Of he's the Protocol? director of okay. Callisto Protocol. Like I'm, I'm, I'm disappointed because like clearly he is actually a good story. He made Dead Space and Dead Space Two. He's actually a good artist and a good storyteller. He knows how to do that. And I don't know what happened with this game. Hmm. I don't know what happened. I don't know why they went so heavy on the single button melee. I don't know. Wasn't this game also crunched for time? Like, they really tried to get it out before the end of the year. They wanted to beat the release of Dead Space 1 remake. I, maybe. I'm not sure. I think that's the story behind that. I don't know. I don't know that one for sure, so I'm not willing to do that. There's also, oh my god, there's enemies that are giant robots. They're these massive fucking robots. And, like, if you get spotted by one, you're just dead. You're just dead. It's that an instant death. Damn. Like, maybe you can get away from it. But then now it's looking for you and it's just going to go to where you were mm. and just try and follow you, hunt you down because there's not really anywhere you can fucking go. Every single time I got spotted by one when I was playing, instant death. That sucks. And it's just like, at, at least, uh, at least in Dead Space, when they were super powerful enemies, you had a chance to get away from them. It, but yeah, I'm worried about Glenn Schofield because like, I know that this was, this was like a passion project for him. And I just don't, I don't know what happened. And it's really disappointing to me because like... Dead Space and Dead Space 2 are, are two of my favorite games ever made. They're incredible. I think they're, they're so good. And then Dead Space 3 came out, but it was such a wild departure from the original ones. There's, like, those two games are like the, to me, they're like the gold standard of a survival horror game. They're so good. And then I feel like his credibility is gone now as a video game director. Like, what, what is this? Yeah. What, what is this? You think popular sentiment is going to look negatively on Callisto Protocol, you think yes. it's going to be regarded as a big failure? And yes. Don't, it's not going to have a cult following, you think? You uh, think? No, no, I don't think so. Mm. I, I really feel like people have basically already forgotten about it. It would be one thing if it was just really bad gameplay, but it looked amazing. Mm. But it isn't that. 
it's got a bunch of bugs. Because if I had really bad, if it, or even if the gameplay was just like okay and the story was okay, but the gameplay looked amazing, like if it was like a crisis type thing, like the game Crisis, sure, that that game is was constantly used as a benchmark because of how good it looked. Mm -hmm. If it was like that type of thing, I could understand it having a cult following. But it's got so many bugs that it's not even worth trying. Mm -hmm. It's really disappointing to me. Well, I'm sorry to hear that. Callisto Protocol sounds like it follows a similar pathway to Ukulele in the sense that there was an original series that we both enjoyed, and we both enjoyed its sequel, and then the third game came out, and it was such a wild departure from the original's formula that people just wanted a proper third game, but they, they weren't getting one. And mm -hmm. so a, a spiritual sequel arose, and it uh, it failed to live up to the expectations. It sounds like you know, Ukulele wasn't great, but at least it didn't crash and burn like it sounds like Callisto Protocol did. Yeah. Ukulele was forgettable. Callisto Protocol is almost like a, a thing to examine, you know, like a case yeah. study. One of the one of the other things, and this is this is a personal this is a personal gripe. I can't I can't I feel like this isn't a good this isn't a legitimate gripe about the game, but this is a personal gripe. The guy they got to play the main character, I don't like him. You don't like his voice? I I, I or his delivery? I don't know. He just the thing the thing that's interesting to me is they got the guy that did the voice of Chris Redfield in Resident Evil Village mm -hmm. to play the voice of the co-pilot. Okay. Who, who dies almost immediately in this. <laughs> they didn't want to pay for his fee. I would rather I would rather have had that guy play the main character in this game. Mm -hmm. Like I think he's actually a good act a good voice actor. But like I just I don't know. Sounds like there are some deep rooted problems with this game that can't be fixed with simple patches or yeah. updates. It's I can see why it's disappointing for you because not only was it a bad experience, but it's never going to be a good experience. It would be like if you wanted to play Dead Space. You want to play the original Dead Space. Cool. Great. The main way that you have to damage enemies is by doing melee and you get six bullets. Fucking go nuts, buddy. Some people would look at that challenge and say, hell yeah, but I... Not, I, I am not that pro... I'm not a challenge runner. Yeah. Yeah. Just had a problem with it. It's just not great. It's uh, unfortunate. I wish it had been mediocre for you at the very best. Yeah, I wish you. I wish you could have gotten at least if the, a few if hours the story. Of if the story was going to be as not good as it is, I wish that the 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 gameplay was good, or you know maybe the gameplay could be eh, but the story could be really good. Mm -hmm. But none none of it, none of it grabbed me. Damn, none of it was interesting. Also, can I just say I'm really sick of the stereotype of the holier than thou prison warden. I'm so sick of that. It's like everybody watched the Shawshank Redemption and it was just like, oh, that's what every prison warden is like. <laughs> All right. No, I'm sure that 90% of prison wardens are just like, don't fucking talk to me. Don't even look at me. If you're in my office, then we have a fucking problem. Okay. I'm, it's, you're it's, just tired of that stereotype. I'm, I'm so sick of it. It's such a bad stereotype. That, like, all these prison wardens are like, I'm here to deliver you into the new thing. You're he your every decision you have made has brought you here to this moment where I am now in control of your life. It's like, oh my god. It's Stop. Stop. Sounds like your gripe with that is the same gripe I have with things like The Walking Dead, where every single instance of that game or show or whatever... It should, you know, it should be a conflict of survival in a horde of zombies. You know, you're in an apocalypse. It should be man versus zombies. But they always add an antagonist, a bad guy. There's the bad guy. There's the governor. There's It just takes away from the experience of trying to survive in a, an apocalyptic scenario because they have to shoehorn in a generic bad guy. Yeah. And yeah, it feels like the prison warden could be that. It could be, I don't, I don't know the exact scenario for Callisto Protocol, but I imagine you're trying to survive against the horrors of a outbreak gone wrong in space. It doesn't need to be a bad guy, but uh, I guess <laughs> final decision, not great. Yeah, it's just, it's, in my, my final decision is disappointment out of 10. Mm. Yeah, I guess the only thing we can hope for with the Dead Space series is that Dead Space 1's remake is received well enough that interest is revived in Dead Space and maybe it'll get a proper third entry in the series. <sighs> I don't think it will. That'd be nice, but mm. I, I really... At this point, you're just hoping the, the remake is decent. No. Yeah. It taught me a very important lesson, which is never look forward to anything. Mm. Everything is always going to be a disappointment. Yeah. I, Not temper your expectations. No, expect everything to be a disappointment. So don't even bother. Yeah. Why yeah. even get out of bed? 